Hello YouTube, this is Hunter Search of the Roller Cafe bringing you our first Armored Elite deck profile. Now obviously, at this, as this set is not actually out yet, despite the fact that of course we know everything in it, um, this is going to be completely proxied. Um, if you want to, me to explain um, why I feel comfortable testing and deck profiling proxy decks, I went on a whole spiel of that at the beginning of my Paris, uh, at my Serpentis Burn deck profile that I uploaded last week. So look into that. Um, of course, uh, there is always a possibility that the set has dropped by now because I am recording this about uh, about 12 days before this deck profile is going to go live. Um, so that's a whole thing, but it, it probably won't be out by then. I'm pretty sure it won't be out by then. Uh, but that said, Let's get into it. Um, this is not this is not necessarily uh, a top tier deck. This is not an HTN. This is not a Surf Burn. This is not a Power Creep Boys. This is not that by any stretch of the imagination. This is an attempt to abuse one of my favorite cards um, and a card that I previously uh, crapped on quite a bit uh, because a ruling that we got recently completely changed the quality of this card and has now become the excellent, perfect center for a meme deck. So let's get into it. All right, opening, Ventus Lupithion. Ah! <laughs> so this is 503, Shield and Helix. Helix is really nice to have, especially since like its evil comes out fairly early. Um, its evil's effect is going to gain it, be gaining it a lot of damage. Um, and yeah, uh, so basically, we're going to get into it later, uh, but we should talk about it now because it's what the whole deck is about. Um, so its evo is 2 cost, 505, so it's only gaining in damage. However, it gains the effect that every time you play a card that costs 5 or more, um, it gets plus 500 beat and plus 5 damage. Now, based on rulings we had received back in February, the assumption was that anything that reduced itself in cost or made itself free did not count towards this. It counted as the cost that was actually paid. Uh, cast as, uh, but um, recent rulings have revealed this is not the case, um, which gives this card some extremely powerful combos. In addition to like comboing with anything that makes itself like free, like hey, here's some cards. Tusk Garden uh, Hail Suplex came out in the same set as this Evo, um, and they become free if you've played a five cost or higher that turn. Um, so they become extremely powerful with this effect. Um, and of course, at minus 3 damage off that Helix, uh, we're not really going to care about when we're gaining all that damage off of uh, the Evolution's effect. So, the Helix is very good for it, it makes it 1100B, fairly respectable number, um, and it's going to be gaining a lot of extra B power uh, to make it quite a force to be reckoned with. Next, we have for our Hail slot, because we need Hails, because we want Hail Suplex, uh, we have Hails Trox Ultra. Um, this is 800B, 2 damage, and has a magic shield, so it is hitting the same number as Arrow's Hydronoid is on that magic shield. Very good base form, uh, that sort of supporting base form is something very handy for a deck like this. Um, and in addition to that, it has a very powerful Evo that is also 5 costs or higher, 7 costs to be specific. Um, so, it plays into the combos of this deck, enabling Tuscar and, uh, Chaos Suplex, or in um, or in a more desperate situation, because you wouldn't ideally be playing an Evo on him uh, when you're in battle with Lupithion, but you'll be able to activate Lupithion's effect by playing down that evolution. Um, though that could be relevant for, say, team attacks. If he's your team attacker, which he often will be because he's a Trifactor Bakugan, um, you could play that. If you play that down that turn, uh, then Lupithion is gaining an extra five damage to contribute to the team attack, which can be very handy. Um, and lastly, we have Paris Kelly on Ultra. Um, honestly, this could probably just be Paris Nobilius Ultra, but I want to test with this first. Um, so, Paris Kelly on Ultra is Magic Shield and Normal Shield 302, and it's the underdog effect to evolve into Diamond Kelly on for free. And Diamond Kelly on is a 9 cost, which means it activates all the stuff. Um, and uh, it's 15 damage, so very, very good with Might and Mac. Um, which we are going to be carrying. So, with that said, let's get into the rest of the deck. 
First up, uh, this is kind of mandatory for a pirate stack uh, that's focusing, especially one that's focusing on high cost cards like this one. Super fuel, one cost, you must reroll. If you open, you get to play the next card for three energy less. This just says this accelerate things. Uh, this is especially useful is getting out Hail Shock Soldiers at Evo on turn five. That is very, very powerful. Uh, not to be underestimated at all. Uh, but in general, that's just accelerate plays in this deck, uh, which is very, very handy when we've got like a fairly decent chunk of high cost cards in this deck because we want to be enabling Lupithion's nonsense. Um, so yeah. Next up, we have uh, Nature's Power. Uh, this is, as I've said many times, this is one of the strongest uh, Strongest one cost in the game, strongest cards in the game in general. Um, is as long as you're against a non Ventus Bakugan, you can just give it minus 500b for one energy, just 500b differential for one energy. It's honestly absurd, uh, extremely powerful. Um, yeah, there's not really much else to be said about that, even if you're fighting a deck with uh, a Ventus Bakugan on it, because Ventus is going to become much more common going into the set thanks to the changes in the Tusk card rolling, thanks to the new Dragonoid. Like, there's just, Vent has got a big boost in this set. Um, but even then, the thing with Nature's Power that makes it so good is, unless you're fighting a mono Ventus deck, it's still going to be a live card. You just can't use it in, in battles against that one specific Bakugan. You just let that attack through, and then you can just use it, no problem. Um, next up, we have Power Obliterator. This is one of the strongest, like, this is the most impactful action, I think, from this new set. Uh, this is a Pyrus Chaos dual faction card that costs 2 energy and get, just gives you plus 700 B. No need to get a fight for the condition of Light's Courage or Prism Laser. You just get plus 700 B for 2 energy. If you're using this faction combination, you should be using this card. Next up, we have uh, 3 copies of My of uh, We have a lot of high damage stuff in this deck. Uh, we have Kellyon, of course, um, and Lupithion and Trox in their evolved states will be hitting very high damage numbers as well. So this is a very, very good card to have in this deck. Um, next, we have two copies of Anger. Uh, this faction combination does not give us access to very much draw power. Um, so having having Anger to, uh, when our hand is running on empty, to just draw and draw two more cards is going to be very, very useful and very, very important. Uh, so now we get into the combo actions. We have Chaos Suplex are three copies, and Tusk are three copies. I'm just going to put these both down at once because they're basically the same card. So these are both six costs that become free when you have played a five cost or higher that turn. Um, Chaos Suplex is plus seven damage, and uh, Tusk Guard is minus 800B. Chaos Suplex is here in this deck specific. Like, I wouldn't normally run this. I think Tusk Guard is fairly smashable now. Um, but Hail Suplex, I would not put in most decks. However, in this deck, because it's activating Lupithion, and also we have um, Might Mac, the full Might Mac engine in here. Uh, well, well, we're lacking Dark Rage, but that's it. Um, the main, the original Might Mac engine is in here. Uh, so, hey, I'll suplex, it's very useful with those, if you can combo those together. It can be a bit difficult. That, that combo in particular can be a bit tricky, because obviously Might and Mac aren't themselves uh, five cost cards, but there are ways to do it uh, that we're going to get into. Um, and Tusk card is just very, very powerful. Like, um, any turn that you've dropped a five cost or higher, which is going to be many, many turns in this deck, uh, because it is so centered around that idea, um, it's minus 800B. It's an 800B differential for no energy. It is really, really strong. It has a weakness to Shadow Strike, of course. But other than that, it's just like a really powerful card. Um, and I'm really excited to see it uh, get more usage going into the Armored Elite format. Three copies of Mac. As I said, we're running the Might Mac engine. We have a lot of high damage stuff in this deck, so uh, it fits in well. Uh, now on to Bakugan Gear, the first deck profile that is going to be featuring the first deck profile on this channel that is going to be featuring ba uh, Bakugan Gear. So first up uh, for Chaos, we have uh, three copies of Hail Racers. Uh, this is of course a five cost or higher, so it's going to be activating all that stuff, um, and it's six energy plus one thousand B. Uh, so that's very significant buff. Um, that buff in particular is going to help Kellyon a lot because Kellyon suffers off of, um, it's even evolved, it's only hitting 1150B, um, so something like Hail Race is going to help it out a lot, uh, pumping up to, uh, what, 2150, um, and in addition to that, 
uh, on the turn is played down, you're able to test guard, uh, hail raises, all that stuff. Um, in addition, uh, with the help of a reduction core, um, you're able to play this down for only four energy, and you're, you can play this down as early as turn two with the help of super fuel. Um, so that's really, really great. And for our other gear, we have Fire Launcher. This is a card that is, I feel is going to be a bit of a steeper hit. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I was not able to praise it as much as it truly deserved when I did my video on the gear because we did not know that whole Tusk Guard ruling. And that Tusk Guard ruling matters a lot for Fire Launcher. Um, so because that is how it works, we have a card, Fire Launcher is a five energy card that gives you four temporary energy when it's played um, and gives plus 300 B. Uh, pretty minor B gain. However, the big points are the five energy and the plus four temporary energy. Now, uh, there is a possibility that the ruling, the ultimate ruling is going to be um, that, that, uh, that cards that become free activate Tusk Garden, uh, Hail Suplex, and the Pythion, but cards are have their cost reduced by a certain amount, uh, still don't. There is that possibility, but the good thing is, of course, that Fire Launcher, even when played for raw cost, is still giving us back four energy, so that's really, really good. Um, yeah, it's just, like, this card, like, combos in immensely good with this deck, because it's giving us back our energy, while also enabling all of our effects. Um, the low amount of B power we're gaining off of it is, of course, a trade-off for that, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, it's just, yeah, it's great. Um, and of course, this is the this is the card that you would use to combo uh, might with your hail suplex, might match with your hail suplex. Because when you play fire launcher, you have now activated hail suplex and tusk guard, um, while also uh, now giving yourself enough energy that you can play might and mac. Um, yeah. Also, Justin Gary, please respond to my tweet. I want to know how this ruling works. I would like there's two weeks before this video goes live. I would really love to know how the heck this ruling works. Okay, star of the show, Hyper Lupithion. We've gone over him before, but just to recap, he's two energy, 505. Whenever you play a five cost or higher card, he gets plus 500 B, plus five damage. So just to recap. Um, <laughs> just to recap, play Hail Bracers, get 1500 B, um, okay, that's above curve, and also 5 damage, uh, don't mind if I do, also enable Hail Suplex and Tusk Guard, like, uh, that's pretty good, um, Hail Suplex, uh, why don't we get, uh, plus 500 B for free, as well as 12 damage, <laughs> like, like, here's the thing, here's the thing, damage boosting is not that great, but this is a card that's giving us in this situation, we're getting plus 500 B for free for zero energy, as well as 12 damage. Like, that's an absurd amount of damage gain. <laughs> and, like, Tusk Guard becomes a, a 1300 V differential for no energy. It's absurd. It's so good. Um, <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, two copies of Maximus Trox Ultra. I'd love to have more of this in here, but we just don't have the space. Um, but this is really good. Uh, 7 energy, 1500, uh, what is it, 9, yeah, 9 damage, um, and when you're in Trifecta, which is having 3 cores attached to your team, uh, it gets plus 1500 B and plus 6 damage, so it goes up to 3k and 15 damage, really, really big, this is really threatening, and your opponent really does not want to be dealing with that in addition to the possibility of Tusk Guards and Hail Suplexes still being available. Um, it's really, really threatening, and it's coming off of Wakon that's, like, already really strong, so, you know, um, it's just good, <laughs> it's just, it's just really nice, high cost is worth it in this case, uh, really wish I could fit it in the third, but, you know, um, and, of course, Pirates Kalyan Ultra, uh, Kalyan evolves into this for free, uh, so, yeah, um, as I mentioned before, um, you could also run Pirates Nobilis Ultra in this, in this spot, um, I would probably at least experiment with using uh, Nobilis' Evo if you wanted to go that route, uh, because of the fact that Nobilis' Evo is a 5 cost, which means it activates all this shit. It activates everything! So, like, it's a, it's a deck where that Evo could actually be pretty solid, uh, because even that, even that Evo is only getting 800B, 
um, when you're activating all these effects, Tusk Guard, Hail Suit effects, all this stuff, um, that can be more useful than it normally would be. Um, so yeah. Um, and then lastly, for our flips, uh, we have just three copies of Confuse. Uh, Confuse is one of the best flips in the game right now uh, because of how um, how uh, very balanced magic shields have proven to be. Uh, so we have a very high count of magic shields in the format, um, and most things that aren't using magic shield are using a flaming fist. Honestly, if we ever got a flip that was like stop magic shields, flaming fists, and helixes, that would just be the best flip that ever existed. Um, and then everyone would play it and everything. Um, <laughs> because like those are the only cores that really matter. Like if you're using fists and shields, um, like you don't want to stay on them. Like sometimes you use fists and shields for uh, gear cost reducing, but you don't want to stay on them. Uh, because it can be very difficult to win on them uh, with the current landscape. Uh, but that's it, that's it. Um, feel free to proxy this yourself or build it yourself when the, when the set is out. Um, I think this deck is a blast. Um, it is one of the most fun concepts I have come up with in a while. And I'm really happy about this ruling change. Um, even if I'm upset that I didn't realize it earlier because we got rulings earlier that didn't really lend themselves to assuming that it would be ruled in this way. But whatever, we're here now, we have this, we have Lupithion in all his glory. Thank God we have some more main faction, like Lupithion deserves something. Like all the Lupithion forms uh, until we learned this ruling were garbage. Um, there was a, way too much of a tendency for main faction, Bakan and their main factions to not be great. Um, and Lupithion really got the short end of the stick in the show, man. Like, like uh, I haven't seen any of the Art Alliance anime yet because it hasn't come out uh, at the time of this uh, recording. Uh, but like, like if the secondary Bakan are just gone in the next season, like Lupithion gets saved just to be dished like the the next day, like. <laughs> Poor guy. I'm glad he's getting something. He deserves it. He really deserves it. All right. That's going to be it for me. Have fun with this. Um, another deck profile next Friday will be something more serious. I think I'm going to go like one week. I'll do like a, a more like um, highly competitive build. Another week I'll be doing something more fun that's uh, still like optimized, but like still just a meme concept. This could still be good. Like to be honest. Like, I haven't done enough testing to say say one more way or another, but this is still very much, like, I feel very optimized for doing what this deck needs to be doing, um, and I feel like it can compete to a decent extent. Um, but, like, I don't want to go out and say this, this, is, this is the new best deck in format, because, one, it's probably not going to be by virtue of being a combo deck that can't even use Aquos um, in its current form. Um, like, that, and... Uh, that combined with um, with just like it's it's a combo deck. Like combo decks are most likely going to be not as effective as just like straightforward decks because you need time to set up and shit. Uh, but like I think this deck is still pretty solid. Uh, so tell me how you do with it. I would love to hear um, of your stories of playing this deck for yourself. Uh, and I'll of course be recording some content with it, which might already be up. By the time of this, by the time this, you you guys are seeing this. So, uh, with that said, this is Hunter Shirt signing off.